By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim? Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And today I have a game for you between a, an Enchantress deck and a Stasis deck. And uh, this is going to be a very interesting matchup because my opponent is Olaf, my friend from Sweden. And we have seen him before on a channel with a Martyrs of Coralis deck that was very entertaining. And this time he's bringing an Enchantress deck to the table. It's going to be a very interesting build. We're going to do a little deck tech on that deck and also on the deck that I am playing today because I'm playing with a Stasis build. But not just your regular Stasis build. No, I'm playing it budget, I'm playing it revised, and I'm playing it monocolored. So I'm really curious to see how this deck will perform. Now, before we're going to the deck tech, you can also go directly to the games if you want to. You can check the description below. There you will find a timestamp and that'll take you straight to game one. But for now, let's dive into these decks. This is the deck that Olaf is playing today. And as you can see, it's a bit, a bit of a messy picture, but I mean, it has full power. It has four enchantresses, but there are also some interesting elements in this deck. It's not your typical enchantress deck. Um, I think the choice for blue is an obvious one. I think that's probably the, the best color to put next to enchantress, although I'm sure there are some different opinions, but at least let me put it this way. In my experience, blue works kind of okay with enchantress, um, but let's kind of zoom in because there are a few things that I want to... Uh, discuss in this deck that I think are very interesting and the first one is of course the Fujuran Enchantress having a lot of enchantments in the deck but certain enchantments really work well with the Enchantress obviously Dance of Many which is kind of the clone from the dark so it lets you clone the Enchantress but it's also an enchantment itself so that means you also get to draw a card also Sylvan Library is a great pick here because it lets you look kind of uh, lets you see what cards you're about to expect and if you kind of need an extra enchantment to get the whole thing going because this seems to be one of those decks that once the enchantress is in full flow my opponent will probably have endless turns endless card draw and it'll go crazy and also when we uh, when we look at the blue power here i think um the uh, the time twister is going to be very important in this deck because that'll allow my opponent to kind of put all the cards from the graveyard back into his library and that means that he can just continue drawing and drawing and drawing so definitely um, definitely enchantress here is, is an important card to to keep in in check when i play against this deck now another interesting thing here that i've noticed is the candelabra of tonis i think it's a beautiful card it's uh the card here that's for one the artifact from the antiquities and it reads x untap x separate lands and a really cool little mini combo or synergy that he's building here is using this card next to wild grove so wild grove says uh it's one it's an enchant land one green and it says when tap target land provides one green mana in addition to the mana it normally provides in other words you get a green mana extra so you get two mana from your land and with candelabra, candelabra of tonish you can invest one mana to untap that land again and basically um you then get three lands out of one land if you can still follow what i'm saying so you kind of win mana here it's a really nice cool little synergy and um it's it's going to be i think this is going to be a problem for the winter orbs that i'm playing um but i, I thought it was really interesting i've never seen candelabra of tannis and wild grove being used next to each other and just to continue with the candelabra of tannis there is a more obvious synergy in his deck and that's of course the mana flare and then you have Mana Flare Wild Grove working together with the Candelabra of Tannises to create a giant fireball. Now this deck is known as Candle Flare, but usually it's just mono red. So it's nice that he's built this in. I think when I'm looking at his deck list, that fireball is the way he wants to go. That's gonna be the way he's gonna to try to win these games, kind of by fireballing me uh, to death. So this is it for uh, the deck of my opponent. Very interesting build. Um, you know, he, he has chosen to do to work with a lot of different colors, making the deck more versatile, but also more dependent on um, his mana base and on his artifact mana. So it's it's going to be interesting. I'm really curious to see how well this deck is is going to perform. So now let's take a look at my stasis deck. The deck that I am playing with today is a mono color deck. It's a mono revised blue build, and it's built around the card stasis. And kind of the people that, that know me, that know this channel, they know I really enjoy Revised because it's just a cheap way to brew a lot of different decks. And I, yeah, you know, Stasis, I always enjoyed the card. Just the art is so funky. What it does, it just, 
in a way it's horrible but in another way it's just fascinating and basically what I want to do is just get a very classic combo uh, going here. So this is basically my perfect board state. If it can get a Howling Mine out, the Howling Mines are actually the most important thing in this build. If it can get a Howling Mine out to provide me with cards, especially with blue mana, and then get a Black Vice on the board and the Stasis on the board, that would be perfect. So my, my, my perfect situation would be turn one Black Vice, turn two Howling Mine, and turn three Stasis. That would just be great. And then my opponent cannot do anything because of the Stasis. The Howling Mind is going to provide me hopefully with blue mana. There are 24 blue mana in this deck. It's a mono color deck, so I don't have to worry about, you know, finding my basic lands here. And of course, the Black Vice is going to hurt my opponent because my opponent cannot play anything out because of the stasis because nothing untaps. So it's a very classic combination. Now, I have built in some little other synergies in this deck because, of course, a three card combo it, it, it's not the strongest. Um, so what I've done to help me here is obviously the Winter Orb kind of works as a mini stasis to hold my opponent back. I'm really looking forward to see this work together with the mana short. So the mana short here on the left uh, of your screen is, or actually, yeah, it's, it's, it's the left or is it the right? Well, just tell me in the comments, but it's the mana short one blue and two. It's an instant and all opponent's lands are tapped and opponent's mana pool is emptied. Opponents take no damage from unspent mana. So I think that's a bit unfortunate. It would have been nice if it would also deal mana burn, although we're playing Swedish now, so there is no mana burn in this particular rule set. So basically it's, it's a pretty obvious combo. I'm going to play my mana short after in his upkeep. So he has to tap all his lands again um, and then play out a winter orb after that and that means that the next turn he can only untap one of his lands so hopefully i can set him back and this is kind of is going to work as a time walk for me i am a little bit worried though because in old school magic there are so many moxen and and um black lotuses around and we see that olaf is also playing i believe with a full set of power so i'm not sure if this is going to work as well as i hope but we'll see another combo i have in here is i play with two discs they're kind of like my my safety, uh, my my backup plan, my plan B or plan C even, to just destroy everything because with blue it's kind of difficult if you don't counter a spell and it's on the board, it's really difficult to get rid of it. So I, I play with two discs just to blow everything up and I also play with one Hercules Recall and Hercules Recall is just this great card for one blue and one this instant and it says all artifacts in play owned by target player or returned to target player's hands. Any enchantments on those artifacts are discarded. So that means that I can activate my disc and while it's on the stack, I can respond by playing my Hercules Recall. And then first the Hercules Recall will go off, returning all the artifacts to my hand, including the disc itself. And then the trigger disc will happen. So this is like, this is one of the, the things I'm hoping for. And I'm actually thinking about maybe making a deck revolving these two cards because I think they're just fantastic. But for, for now, for this game, I'm only playing with one Hercules Recall and two discs, but it's a nice little combo. So then when, when we go back to the, um, the deck itself, we see that I have some Ivory Towers, hopefully to get me some, some life gain. Also in this case, to protect me from the Fireballs, I have some Power Sinks and some Counter Spells. Now remember, um, we don't know what decks we're going to play prior to this. So I haven't seen his deck photo. I don't know that his win, win con is going to be a Fireball. Um, so this is the list. Obviously, one thing I want to point out here is, is the obvious synergy here with Power Sink and Winter Orb and Power Sink and Stasis. It's just really nice. So Power Sink can really do some damage in, uh, in this matchup. So this is the deck. Now um, let's go to the games and see what's going to happen. Game number one is about to start and Olaf gets to be on the play and look at that Mox Sapphire and a basic land, a forest. I'm playing an island. Ooh, that's a pretty good start here by Olaf with that Sylvan Library turn two and I have a Howling Mine turn two. Howling Mine being the, one of the most important cards in my deck because I need to get things going. And, but for now, it's also great for Olaf, of course, finding an extra card and also with that Sylvan, having that advantage to kind of go through his deck very quickly. And look at that, playing a Mind Twist. Ah, that's horrible. So I can already tell this is going to be a difficult matchup for me here. And let's see what cards he picks. And losing a disc here is very unfortunate. I was hoping to use that disc 
to actually let him build up his board state and then play out the disc and just blow everything up. That was kind of my uh, my simple humble plan, but my simple humble plan is no longer. And there's the Enchantress, and it looks like there's a counter spell here, so that's good for me at least. I get to keep him at bay a little bit longer, and hopefully I can find some more key pieces. Playing a Winter Orb, maybe that can help slowing him down. Now remember, he does have that Mock Sapphire that untaps as normal. And that is, I think, the big problem here is that because of all the Moxen, the Winter Orb doesn't work as well as it's supposed to. And takes damage there from his City of Brass, playing a Demonic Tutor. I wonder what he's going to look up. A classic play, of course, is Demonic Tutor into Ancestral Recall, but I think in this case... It's not really worth it because he already has so much card draw going on with the Sylvan and the Howling Mine in play. And is he going to pass turn? Looks like he's... I think he is. Looking at his hand again. And he's choosing to activate his Strip Mine, trying to slow me down as well a little bit, playing a Candelabra of Tannis. And remember I talked about the Candelabra of Tannis and, and Wild Growth combination in the deck tech, so I'm curious if we're going to see that. Playing a Library of Lang, that's pretty classic here, Howling Mind, Library of Lang, classic combination. All I need now is an Ivory Tower. That's what I, I used to see a lot with the Artifact decks um, when I played back in, in 95 in the Revised Era. There's a little bit of untapping going on here, taking a damage, playing an Animate Debt, nice! An anime deck, again, one of those cards that I think goes really well in an Enchantress deck. So Enchantress is back in the game, and that means problems for me. Can I do something against this? Playing an Ivory Tower. My hand's pretty empty, though, at the moment. Because of that mind twist, that was just brutal, but at least I'm still in the game, that's something. And drawing two here because of the Howling Mine. Playing Dance of Many. Nice synergy here again with the Enchantress. Drawing a card and getting an extra Enchantress on the battlefield. And that's not great for me. Oh, there we see. There we see a Wild Growth on, I believe, the Forest. So that means that we maybe get to see that synergy that I talked about in the deck tech with the Candelabra of Tannis, but first it's my turn, drawing two here, playing an island, tapping for two, and there is our superhero, the Stasis, the main character of my build, there's a little thumbs up there from Olaf, because it means he cannot pay the upkeep cost for Dance of Many, so Dance of Many goes, I believe that was one of the main reasons for me to play out the Stasis a little bit early, but look at that, finding a soul ring, and with that Candelabra he can now untap two lands, including the Wild Grove land, so he can kind of generate three mana if he wants to, but he's just passing turn for now. Drawing two from my Howling Mine. Hopefully I can find an island to feed to my stasis. The problem, of course, here is that I have no Black Vise on the board, so there's no way that I can deal damage to him. So basically I'm just slowing him down and refilling my hand at the moment. That's what I'm doing. But the big problem is what if he gets to untap everything? And let's see what he does now. Untapping his land with the Wild Grove. And he has to choose another land, I guess. And changing his mind here. Not the city, but the tropical island. Will we see some blue power? And there's another Wild Grove. Still one green mana floating. Using another one to play another Wild Grove. And now we can really see this deck getting into action. Playing another Candelabra, one mana floating still. Because those lands with the Wild Grove produce an extra green. And I think this is where it's going to get kind of complicated. So maybe I can just, you know, get a coffee, get a beer. Maybe put on a movie. Because <laughs> I, I don't think I'm going to get another turn, to be honest. There's a copy artifact over the Candelabra. And that's what makes it... Uh, you know, it's 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 nice to see it go off like this. You can really see the way the deck is supposed to work. But it's also a little bit difficult because I have a stasis on the board and still he's able to do so many things. Now he's past turn. I'm paying my last island. And I have to pass turn you, so I didn't find another island. And that's that means trouble for me. Because next turn I'm going to lose my stasis. 
So I wonder what's going to happen. We see a black lotus here. And it's really interesting for me to see how much Olaf can do even with the stasis on the battlefield. It's like it's just great. And you can also see the power of those candelabras. I think it's really nice to, to kind of make that combination. He's passing turn. I'm gaining some life from the ivory tower. So you see my dice. I'm now on 24. And there at least is a black vice. At least it's something. And um, ooh, and look at that. Yeah, he's forgetting the winter orb. Because of the winter orb, and maybe that can kind of save me here, although I don't think it can because of all the candelabras. Uh, at least it's going to kind of unlimit that, kind of limit that, I mean, that untap step with the winter orb. But in this case, I don't think it's going to help. Playing a chaos orb, he's actually going to flip on my winter orb, which I thought was a very interesting decision. And I'm just not going to put it in slow-mo because the angle is not great here, but he's hit my winter orb. And, and this is, is ringing my alarm bells because why would you play a flip on the winter orb in your own main phase? And this is probably why. It's going to look up a time walk maybe, or maybe, yeah, a time walk here. So I'm probably not going to have another turn. So he's now going to take his turn he's already destroyed my winter orb because of that time walk play um so he now has a lot of mana a lot of mana he is taking a little bit of damage from the black vice <laughs> look at that that's end game playing a fork on his fireball nice well done so we're going to go into our sideboards i can tell you i'm definitely going to board in a full play set of blue elemental blasts for this one and, and then we're going to go to game two and let's see if i can um get a win and, and kind of get a game three out of this. I have my doubts, but I'm definitely going to try. Game number two, and we've done our sideboarding. And I'm sure my opponent has boarded in some uh, red elemental blasts. I've boarded in some blue elemental blasts. So I'm, cu I'm curious to see how it's going to have, how it's going to turn out. And look at that start here by Olaf with the Mox Ruby into a soul ring. And I had a turn one ivory tower and that's it. Passing turn here again. He has that strip mine. Not really happy about that. Taking another life, going to 22 now, playing island number three, passing turn. There's that candelabra again. Again, not something that's not something that's making me exceptionally happy here. Now on 23 life, passing turn again. He's passing turn. And I think this is going to be very like long games because we both have these decks that need a lot of time, these grinding decks. And let's see if we can do something. Tapping for four here, playing the disc. Yeah, I guess I can activate it because my opponent seems to have a mana problem here. So with one activation, I can get rid of a lot here. And he's playing a fireball on me, kind of forcing him to do that now. Probably doesn't want to discard. And playing a Howling Mind, choosing not to use the disc. So it's pretty interesting here. The fact that he's playing with green, I wonder if he's boarded in crumbles. But of course, I can always use the... Oh, look at that, another one. And there's a blue elemental blast. What I wanted to say, I guess I can always use the... Um, the uh, the disc in response, that's what I'm trying to say here. Drawing two with the Howling Mind, it's, it's interesting. I'm thinking now, should I, what should I do? Oh, wow. Choosing not to blow up the disc and instead I'm, I'm activating, I'm playing a stasis. And of course, because of that mana flare, this is interesting. I'm doubting now, what am I going to do? Am I going to play, pay for the stasis and then destroy my disc? I decide not to. It's a very interesting game so far playing an island and then destroying the disc. I'm sorry, Olaf, I don't know what I want to do at this point. This is one of those moments where I realize I don't play with this deck enough to really make the right choice here. And what I do is I destroy it after his untap up, so I destroy it in his upkeep, obviously, because I don't want to give him the advantage of untapping first. So now I get to untap first. But I wonder if this was the right decision to make because 
I had the stasis on the board, so I had control. And now I'm passing turn, I guess, so there's no plan. Playing a wild growth over the volcanic island. Playing the candelabra. And there is a, a power sink here. In response, there's an ancestral recall. And playing out the tropical island. Didn't play out of land yet. Again, I get to untap. Passing turn. I'm still in doubt how I played that situation with the disc. I think I made a, made a mistake there because I had control with the stasis. Or I should have used the disc before and then play out the stasis next turn or, or something. There's the Enchantress here. And there's another Power Sink. We didn't see any Power Sink in game one, but I guess I'm able to find them now. And tapping again. So the counter spells are kind of helping me to keep control of the situation here. And again, we see that my Winter Orb isn't doing a lot of work because of the Moxen that Olaf has in his deck and because of the Wild Grove. Because he only has to tap one land for two mana and he's playing a Sylvan Library. No counterspell this time from my side of the board. Just drawing card and passing turn. And it looks like it's slowly now rolling towards Olaf again. Playing a Mana Flare. So that means that my Winter Orb is, is even more useless than it was. Let's see what I can do. Playing a blue elemental blast on the mana flare. Of course, a dangerous card in combination with Fireball and Candelabra of Tanis. And also with that winter orb, the mana flare was making my winter orb even more useless. So, so far the blue elemental blasts are really working well, but I've already used two and I haven't used a single one on a... Um, Oh, and there's a Counterspell on the Candelabra of Tanis. I haven't used a single one on a Fireball. And I've also used a lot of Counterspells so far. Finally, there is a Black Vice, something to deal damage with in this deck. But there is a Chaos Orb, and I wonder what he's going to flip on. I think it's the uh, Winter Orb. So Winter Orb is out again. Interesting choice to do it in his main phase. And there's a stasis. I think that was a little mistake by my opponent, but I'll take it. Because it's hard work to, to play with this stasis deck. Playing an island, so it looks like I've got things pretty much under control here. And this is what I wanna what I wanna do. I want my opponent to have a full hand and the Black Vice and Stasis on the board, and then I want to have a lot of islands. So this is six more turns of Stasis Violence, and he's on 14 at the moment. Ooh, look at that, finding a Black Lotus. And that can really mess with my plan, because now he can maybe empty his hand, and when he empties his hand, my Black Vice is not going to work. Ooh, oh man, another Mind Twist. Uh, mind twist game one, mind twist game two. This is brutal. It's my go again. Tapping another land. At least finding an island, so it's not too bad. But I don't think that my opponent is. Is my opponent still taking damage? Not a lot. He's on 13. I'm on 22. At least he takes two damage now. Finding a land, passing turn. Playing against an, a Sylvan is just. Hard work, hard work, and I'm, I've am i lost my last Blue Elemental Blast with that Mind Twist, so that's not great. At least my opponent, Olaf, is now on 9. So there is light at the end of the tunnel, it seems. And I have enough Island still. Passing turn. So now he's going to 7. Playing another land. I mean, he has three mana now, so maybe next turn he is going to do something. He's now on five life. 
playing a wild growth another extra mana playing two playing a fast bond playing a time walk and I'm allowing it paying another blue but also playing on an island so nothing's wrong but he doesn't take any damage from the vice anymore after playing all that out and of course you know he gets to select I think he has five now in hand so when I pass turn he's going to take at least one damage if I'm not mistaken and he does he's going to go to four if only I could do something about that Sylvan this is going to be exciting here Oh, red elemental blast. Oh, this is painful. He's on four life. I'm almost there, but almost isn't enough. He's going to go to three. And this is exciting stuff here. Am I still going to lose? I, I, the answer could definitely be yes, because all my blue elemental blasts are gone. And, you know, my opponent has a full grip of cards. Of course, he does have the black vice to deal with. And unfortunately, there was a little bit of a hiccup with the internet connection, as you can see. So it, it's a bit hard to follow at certain points what he's going to do now, what I remember from this game. And this was this was a very long game because um, I'm playing this for you at twice the speed. So this took twice as much time in, in real time when I was playing this game. Um, he's going to do tons and tons of stuff. And finding another Enchantress and kind of now he's got his whole Enchantress machine going playing a copy artifact I don't know what he's copying actually I think he's copying my black vice now I rem remember but he gets to draw two more cards from that and that's of course what it's all about he is passing turn look at me untapping all my islands I'm the island king what I need now is an island fish of Jeskonicus is that how you pr what's the island fish I need the island fish Look at that, at this, at least I'm finding Winter Orb, maybe that can do something. I'm going to 20 because of the damage from the vice that he copied. There's a Mana Drain, but there's a Counterspell. I am drawing a lot of Counterspells this game. Am I using them wisely? I don't know, but I am drawing a lot of them. He's on 3 life. And I have that Winter Orb. Hopefully that's going to kind of set him back a little bit. But he has so much artifact mana. I don't think it really matters that much. And in his... Oh, look at this. In his upkeep, I'm playing the mana short. So that's going to tap his land. And it does mean he's also getting damage from his own City of Brass. And I just love the art of mana short. I think it's a beautiful card. And it does mean some damage here for Olaf. Playing an island. I mean, he is giving me opportunities to do something. He's giving me a lot of turns. I'm counting my mana because there's a Brain Geyser. The reason I'm not tapping all out is because I'm hoping to find a Stasis here and playing the Stasis. So I still want to have enough mana to play a Stasis. But I'm not finding it. Uh, that's why I kept four mana open because my idea was if I find a stasis, I two to play the stasis and two lands to pay for the upkeep cost of stasis. The problem is his cards amounts are so low. Playing a copy artifact over the winter orb. The reason I'm doing this is because I really don't want to lose the winter orb. If he finds a way to get rid of the winter orb, he can untap all his land and play a giant fireball. I don't want that to happen, so I'm copying my own winter orb here that he has to get rid of two of them which i think is is a pretty is too much to ask from olaf's deck and look at that he's untapping again both of us are not really doing a lot this is dangerous looking in his graveyard does he have an anime dead or some other spell maybe a recall to get some cards back i haven't seen a recall yet in these games look at what he's doing is there a recall? Yes, there is a recall. And that means he's going to throw two cards away there to the Brain Geyser and the City of Brass. And he's going to pick two cards to bring back. Probably a Time Walk in there. Maybe also a Regrowth. 
to regrow his time walk. On the other hand, he has to be careful here. He's on two life. I have a double vice. Interesting, Candelabra of Tanis. Maybe he has a fireball, wants to play a huge fireball. Uh-oh. This is not looking good for me, Candelabra of Tanis. Playing out the Mana Flare. Using it to untap. You can now untap two lands, so two lands with Wild Groves on them. And he still had a Mana Floating, I believe. Anyway, he's got tons of Mana now, and he gets to draw two cards. It's actually passing turn. Interesting. It is, I think Olaf's deck is a hard deck to play because there are so many components involved. I remember playing uh, Candelabra of Tons in my Tron deck and it, you had very difficult board states and situations and now he, he's built a deck with and Candelabra of Tons and Enchantress. So it's, it's definitely difficult to like keep all those things that are happening in mind and make make the right decision. There's an animate dead. Is he gonna bring back another enchantress? Wow, three enchantress. And I mean, he has to be careful here, drawing a lot of cards. Of course, enchantress card draw is optional, but it is risky. He's only on two life, attacking me now uh, with the Mistress Factory. So he's finally gonna deal some damage. Uh, but also deciding to untap it a few more times with his Candelabra, I believe. Yeah, so he attacks making it a 2 to make it a 3 3. Then he's using his Candelabra to untap both of his Mistress factories and pumping that one factory again. So that means he can uh, up, up his factory up to a 5 5. So that's why I'm going from 20 to 15 here. Let's see. Tapping 2, playing a Howling Mine. That's always good news for me. Copying the Howling Mine. And passing turn. What I really need here is a stasis. What I'm trying to do, obviously, is just trying to overflow my opponent Olaf with cards. He's only in two. I've got a double vice. Ay, 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 ay. Demonic Tour. Look at how small that library is. He's got maybe seven cards in. What is he going to do? Another. He's going to make sure he doesn't deck himself here. He's playing another Enchantress. Oh, of course. Of course. Of course. Well done. Of course. A time twister. <laughs> wow. I think I think Olaf is going to gonna kill me now, probably. Finding a whole new hand. Having those Enchantresses to just keep on looking for... A fireball, but of course, if I find a blue elemental blast or a counter spell for that fireball, then the party is off. So it's still very interesting. Look at that drawing a full hand of four cards. And even more options here. I mean, and look at that. Yeah, a time walk. Which is fine, but he needs to empty his hand, of course. Drawing because of his fast bond. I'm not sure if that's the right decision here. Playing a Black Lotus. Now, I remember this situation here, and I was thinking, how is he going to get rid of all his cards? But obviously, I wasn't going to say a thing here. Because I have to double Black Vice, so I'm thinking, if I can survive this turn, and he goes to his upkeep... I mean, he's now tapping a lot of mana, so maybe we're going to see a giant fireball and it's the end of the road here, which wouldn't surprise me. And just to make, make a long story short, he's generating tons and tons and tons and tons of mana. So I, I think mana isn't really an issue anymore, but right now, look at that, he's discarding and he's taking his second turn. <laughs> oh, I think I'm going to win this one now. And here's the moment he realizes it. Look at that. He's like, oh, shit. And he's showing his hand. And you could see there that he was having, actually, he was having a fireball in his hand. And he had a red elemental blast. So he could have won the game. But he forgot about my black vices because he was so in the tank, focused on the cards he was going to draw and what he was going to do. And he thought, you know what? I'm just going to take my extra turn and then I'm going to kill him. So, well... 
Olaf, thank you very much for this. At least we have a 1-1 one, one, and we have a game number three. So we're going back to our sideboards, maybe do a little bit of tweaking and, and then I'll see you guys at game number three. Game number three is about to begin and I'm happy that there is a game number three. I'm very lucky in that second game, but uh, you know, I'll take it. All the luck I can get, I'll take because that Enchantress deck is pretty strong there, full power. And uh, I'm just happy I got my Stasis and a Black Vice on the board. Maybe I can do this again in game three. I feel that in both the games I had opportunities. Um, Olaf's deck is not a quick deck. So he does give me a chance to assemble the pieces. And while I say this, look at that start by Olaf. Soul Ring, Mox Ruby, Mishra's Factory, and then a Candelabra of Tannis. Tacking him for two, untapping, dealing three damage. That means I'm going to 17. Passing turn, not playing a land. Interesting. Taking two life here from the Ivory Tower back to 19. And oh, this is actually a great curve so far. Playing a Howling Mind. That does mean that Olaf gets to draw two cards instead of one. And he's found a land there. Taking a damage. Playing out a Sylvan Library again. And that Sylvan was a big pain for me earlier. And just dealing two damage. Not pumping. Or just dealing three damage as well. So... And let's see, there seemed to be a little glitch. Playing out an island here. I keep forgetting my own ivory tower trigger. <laughs> it's not very good. Playing another Howling Mine and a Black Vice. So this is starting to look good for me. Obviously, I'm giving Olaf a lot of opportunity here because he gets to draw a ton of cards. He gets to look at a ton of cards first because of the Sylvan Library. I mean, look at that. And he gets to pick three cards from those five cards. So that is pretty insane. That means a lot of opportunity and a lot of ways to kind of deal with the threats that are on the table. Now, obviously, I'm playing with my Black Vices, hoping to find a stasis so I can lock this game up. The question is, if I, is can I do that, actually? And we saw Olaf actually being able to play out a lot of stuff with an active stasis on the board. So even the stasis is no guarantee for the win here. There is a Chaos Orb. That's already a big problem for me. Is he going to activate it? And if so, on what? And he is activating it on the Black Vice. And there is the Enchantress. Untapping, also drawing three cards now. And what can I do? Ideally, it would be a Black Vice and a Stasis now. There is the Stasis, but not the Black Vice. Hoping, of course, because I get to draw three cards each turn, that I will find my islands to keep the Stasis going. Still having three of those islands untapped. And there is a Mox Pearl and an Underground Sea. And it's going to be curious to see if Olaf is playing anything else. Looks like he's passing turn here. And I'm untapping, which is, of course, completely wrong. <laughs> I forgot my own stasis. So paying for the stasis, drawing three cards here. And playing an island. And passing turn again. It is really nice, by the way, to play with a combo deck again, like Stasis, and that you have to think of all the steps. I mean, it's kind of good for my overall magic skills. And there's a City of Brass, passing turn, and I'm gaining life now from the tower. I'm back to 21, drawing three more cards. But I need a Black Vice here to deal some damage. And I think, like I said earlier in this particular game, I think I just need to add that Black Vice number four because it's so important. Deciding to discard the Ivory Tower. And again, Olaf is looking at a lot of cards. What is he going to do? Taking a damage from the city. Playing that Wild Grove, drawing a card from the Enchantress. 
And these are really interesting games because both of these decks have a lot of card draw in them, so you always have a lot of options. Tapping for two here. And he's playing a Demonic Tutor. And this is difficult. If I have a counter spell in hand and use it, it means I lose two islands. It's always the question, what will he look up? And I have no idea here. He doesn't have any enchantment removal in his deck. He's already used his Chaos Orb. Paying a life, playing a fast bond, and of course he can use that to empty his hand. So the question is now, am I going to counter it or not? And I am actually playing a counter spell on the fast bond. And I think in hindsight that this is a wrong decision. My, my thought process at the time was I'm going to draw three from the Howling Mines. So I will... Um, I will find another island again to pay for my stasis. But it's very risky. And of course with Fast Bond he can empty his hand and do all sorts of stuff. It is a dangerous card. I mean, in normal circumstances it's very good to counter it. On the other hand, I mean, he is paying a life every time he's he has to play out an extra land. And now he is discarding. Drawing three for turn and finding that island. And passing turn again, having to discard and discarding a copy artifact. And there it is, a strip mine. And that means it's end of the road for me. And I think I think I think here is is is, is where I made a mistake. Well, here but the mistake with the counter spell, because I have no islands backing me up to pay for the stasis playing another wild growth and of course drawing a card from the enchantress and then it's my turn i have to discard the stasis i can no longer afford to pay the cost and look at that he's discarding his mind twist thank you for that olaf you're being you're being a gentleman after twisting me in game uh, in the, in the first two games it's very much appreciated playing an island out now it also makes me wonder what other good cards he has in his hand that he prefers to discard his Mind Twist. Playing a single island, having to discard two cards again. A Winter Orb there and another copy artifact. And we're just drawing tons of cards this game, which is a lot of fun. There's a Mana Flare again drawing a card. And I'm pouring in a little something there on the side. Because I know that this is probably going to be a long turn from Olaf. And even though I'm on 27, I'm really worried here. And that little dice there is kind of showing how much mana he has floating. And he's playing a time walk now, taking an extra turn. And tapping a lot of stuff, untapping a lot of stuff. Here we see that stuff going again, it's synergy with Wild Grove and Candelabra of Tannis. Two mana floating, I guess he saw that on the dice, he's taking it away, so he's paying three now? No, he's not. Okay, this is gonna be, <laughs> this is gonna be hard to follow. I think we're just gonna trust Olaf on this, and look at that, uh, Regrowth, and there's gonna be another Time Walk, probably. And those um, counters there are indicating the amounts of turns he has after this one, so you know, you know it's not you're not doing great when your opponent needs something to track the amount of extra turns that he's getting after this turn. So there are two extra turns here. So my only hope is that he'll kill himself somehow. Uh, untapping a lot of stuff again. And tapping a lot, taking some damage here. And is there going to be a fireball? And remember, he also has a mana flare. So I get to save myself here with the blue elemental blast. And then he's taking his first turn of his second, of his two extra turns. <laughs> this is just crazy. I mean, I'm now completely tapped out. Remember, he also has the mana flare. 
second mana flare so he can now produce tons and tons of mana in combination with his candelabra so 27 life means nothing if he has a fireball and he gets back a fireball now probably and i think i'm pretty sure i'm giving up at this point or am i asking him to finish it so he's putting away three cards and taking away a re Bringing, bringing in his hand a Fireball Regrowth and Demonic Tutor. And he's now counting the amount of land. So remember, he gets three mana per normally tap land. Then you also have to tap lands with the Wild Growth that give him four. And then he can untap them for just one mana. So he pluses and there's a huge Fireball and that's it, I'm dead. And I'm showing you my hand. I actually had pretty good hand there. A lot of counter spells. I, I felt like I was drawing a lot of good cards in this turn and uh, in this game. I mean, it's game number three. And if my decisions would have been a little bit better, and and you know, I could have maybe won or at least be a little bit closer to the victory. Also, I need um, I need my black vice number four. So I think it's it's a bad decision not to play with black vice number four. So that's definitely going to go. Uh, back into this deck. Uh, for now, thank you for watching this episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And of course, thank you, Olaf, uh, for playing with me again. You have very entertaining decks. It was a lot of fun. And I mean, this took us, this video is now on, I believe, 45 minutes, more than 45 minutes long, just because the games take a long time. And I had to do a little bit of deck tech, of course, to show you guys the decks. But again, thank you for watching. If you want to support the channel, you can do so by subscribing if you're not yet a subscriber, a member of the channel. Also, please leave a comment, uh, place a like. You've probably noticed that I have some ads running in this uh, in the videos as well. That's just going to allow me to get a little bit of revenue back. So please don't use an ad blocker uh, for that. And that's also a way of helping me actually by not using an ad blocker. Um, if you want to see more old school Magic the Gathering, check out the channel, check out the videos that are appearing on the screen right now. For now, thank you for watching and see you next time. <laughs>